Hello everybody and welcome to today's video on Palantir. So I wanted to make this video on Palantir because I think there's a lot of confusion as to what Palantir does and specifically Palantir's foundry. So my first premise for this video is that most investors in Palantir, including myself, are invested in Palantir because of their foundry software or their foundry operating system. Um, and that, that, that um, nascent software that, that, that Palantir is now selling hasn't always been there. The, 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 the kind of a legacy product of Palantir, what launched Palantir, was their Gotham system, which is their, their, uh, their system that they sell to governments, the police, the military. Uh, that is what launched the business, and that is separate from Palantir's foundry. Palantir also has another business called Apollo, which is a software deployment business, which is separate again from Foundry and from uh, and from Gotham. So I'm not addressing kind of the legacy products of Palantir in this video. I'm only addressing Foundry, which is the product that Palantir is pushing and which is why um, I think so many people are betting on Palantir and Palantir being the future. So what does Foundry do? What do they aim to do? Well, they aim to become the operating system for enterprises. They want to be the operating system for an enterprise, an operating system on which different apps, systems are installed and created. Uh, so kind of think of it as a, as, a, as a Microsoft Windows for running the corporations, but the apps are data apps, business apps that are running on it. Um, and let me just talk a little bit about the history or, or, or Palantir's main premise for creating Foundry. Well, it, it, go, it goes from, from uh, observing that most data today um, um, is used to generate dashboards. And those dashboards are generated by data scientists and data analysts, uh, dashboards and reports. And those dashboards and reports are sent to managers. Um, and managers may use those dashboards and may use those reports or they may not uh, in, in their decision making. But there is no cohesive, integrated way for managers to act on those dashboards and to act on those reports. And so what Palantir Foundry does or, or aims to do is to integrate two sides of the business. On one hand, the data scientists and the data analysts, these are technical people, they are code savvy, they are savvy in math mathematical model and machine learning AI. So that's one side of a business and it wants to integrate them with business operators who are non-technical people. And that will come in come into play later when we talk about uh, no code, uh, no code application, but what, what Foundry does. So Foundry is not a data science uh, specific or data scientist software, contrary to what many believe. It is a much more holistic software to run the organization. It's not just focused on data science. And so that's why a lot of people may compare Foundry to a, a data warehouse or a data lake software. And it's not that. Foundry sits on top of those, or at least that is the value proposition of Foundry. So let me pull up a chart and kind of discuss um, each of the functions of Foundry, the software Foundry. So this is what the operating system looks like. And I'm, I'm going to go from the bottom of the slide. So the first step to um, integrating Foundry and using Foundry to, to run your enterprise is, first of all, you need to load, um, you need to, as they say uh, on, on, a, on a Palantir's uh, language, in Palantir's language, you need to hydrate uh, the model. So you, you need to load onto Foundry separate data sets that you need to load on there. And, and there's two main things that you need to load. One of them is all of your data, like all of, all of it. And, it. and it could be geospatial data. It could be Internet of Things data, like sensors that you have on an oil rig or, or sensors that you have on a parking lot. You know, whenever a car comes in and parks in a parking lot, it triggers a little sensor. All of this data, um, it could be data that you have on ERP systems, on platforms and data lakes. So you have to upload all of those. And let me show you what, what um, and this is this is where the, the theme of the video came from. Um, so, for example, this is the type of data that you can upload. So you can connect Foundry to Snowflake. So Snowflake is much 
uh, smaller in what it is trying to achieve uh, than, than say, uh, Palantir's Foundry. It's much smaller, but you can upload your Snowflake, but you may have data in BigQuery, in Redshift, and you can upload all of your data onto Palantir's Foundry. So that's one of the things you can do, but that's not it. You can also connect to Palantir Foundry um, the no uh, SQL databases like MongoDB, which is a stock I follow on the channel. So again, not di not directly competing with Snowflake and not directly competing with Foundry here. So you can integrate those and add those to um, to the Foundry software. And the last one is all of your SaaS. So Foundry is not competing with SaaS. It integrates with, with uh, at least those ERP system type of SaaS. It integrates them within Foundry. So that's what um, that's what this does, and you can load those. So you can see that uh, Foundry, um, Foundry is really taking a more collaborative approach with all of those businesses that companies already have installed in their system. Foundry is, is really designed to to evolve with you, and you come as you are to Foundry, and it adapts to what your corporation already has. It adapts to all of the processes that your corporation already has, and you don't have to worry about changing your processes. The software fits you. The software fits what you already use. So that's one of the things that you load onto the Foundry software. And another thing that you load onto it is all of your models. Uh, so you, your your ML AI models, uh, your statistical tools, your risk models, all of the models that data, data scientists do, you upload them and assumptions in these models, predictions of sales, etc. You upload all of that onto Foundry. And that is step one. That's hydrate. You're hydrating Foundry. Um, when, when I mean Foundry, of course, it's the whole holistic thing, but what are you specifically... Uh, quote unquote hydrating. Well, you're hydrating something that Pantier calls the ontology. Uh, and ontology is just the, the, the branding that Palantir uses to mean a digital twin. So you're loading it onto a digital twin, which is where all of the data and the models, all of the data right here and models right here, are woven together in a simulated world recommending the best course of action in real time. So the software makes predictions in real time as to what you should do and recommends actions in real time. And you, as a business owner, are free to execute or not. Or, as we'll see later, you can have apps built on it that execute for you uh, without having any intervention. Um, and so this is this is where the Lord of the Rings reference to Palantir comes into question because um, uh, not comes into question, but it, it needs to be put forward. Uh, Palantir, right in uh, in Lord of the Rings, that's what predicts the future, what predicts what's going to happen. That's why the company is named Palantir. And of course, with their digital twin, they simulate the future and they give you predictions, okay, of the future. And then, how do you get these predictions, right? Because you can't, you, I mean, you, you can't really um, live in this statistical world or you can't make sense of the statistical model. Well, it, it talks to you through workflows. So it talks to the users, for example, through dashboards that the users have. It talks to the business analysts through scenario evaluation. So what an, a business analyst can do, for example, is they can be like, uh, okay, what would happen if I raise my prices in the store? And then you can see real time what would happen. Or what would happen if I'm out of a product? Or what would happen if I'm out of inventory? What would happen if I have a strike and my assembly is down? You can run tons of scenarios uh, on Foundry on Foundry's ontology to find out, and also the software will predict to you for you what what works and what's not working. So dashboards, scenarios, and the last one, which is the most interesting to me, which I think is where the future of, of edit is, what they call systems of actions. And what is a system of action? Well, really simply, it's an app. Uh, so on Foundry. No code, non-technical users, non-technical users can build apps that essentially run the business. You can build an app that essentially run, runs the business. Your role as a manager becomes mostly approving actions. Some actions need approval, so mostly approving them 
and improving the app over time. But you don't even you need to approve all of the actions. And, and in the future, where this is headed is, is, is in, my, in my opinion, is, is the company will run itself. And the role of a manager will be to update those systems of actions. And the company just does all the work. The, the AI, essentially, your digital twin, essentially, predicts for you what needs to be done for your organization to have competitive advantage. So that's why part of the, much, of, much of the, cam the campaign that Palantir has for, for their product is generate alpha, right? How do you win against your competition? Well, one way to win against your competition is to use AI to predict what's the best course of action uh, in, in, um, in, in, in cases of uncertainty, whenever there's disruption. So the company can really help you become anti-fragile, for example, because you can plan for crazy scenarios. And you, you really understand the, the background of this company because it, it, it initially got started as a military company. So it was designed for that. Uh, and those systems of actions, my viewpoint on this is that um, most companies down the road will be run like a Google, uh, so, i.e. most companies will be fully automated and the role of a manager is to improve the product, but it's not to run the product the day-to-day -day, and that's part of the a selling point of Palantir. For example, the job of, of, a, of a data scientist or the job of most software developers is to integrate. Like they spend up to 80% of their time just integrating, you know, you have one row of data coded one way and another row of data coded another way, and 80% of your time is, is spent connecting disparate tools, connecting disparate databases. And so you don't, you, 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 that's not the future, right? The future is not working on these tedious tasks. No, the future is really just thinking about your organization and building the software that runs the organization afterwards. And I think that's what that's what Palantir um, is, is aiming to do. And of course, they are very, very much far ahead on this. Uh, and so it's that's why they've had such a hard time selling that value proposition. Because people people right now, and you know this is evidenced by the success of, of Snowflakes or Man MangoDB, people right now are still in the dashboard era. We are still stuck in this phase, but Palantir is telling you, well, you know, it's nice to have dashboards, but if if your business uh, users, right, if, if, if they don't act on those dashboards, if you don't act on the insights that you get from your digital twin, then, then, then it's pointless. It's about, it's about acting on those insights. It is what matters. And so that's why I believe Palantir is very, very early. You know, prime time for Palantir maybe a few years from now and not exactly today. So, so we are early. And so there is a, 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 a grand misunderstanding as to what the company does. Um, so custom apps, right? Right here, this point right here is where the gold lies. This is where I believe most of the value of this company will be built. Um, and first of all, if you can have custom apps and if non-technical users, and if you look at videos of Palantir, it seems fairly easy to do, uh, can just create industry specific systems for themselves, then it's the end of industry specific SaaS, right? You don't need, I don't know, you don't need Toast anymore to run your restaurant. Um, because you can just build a custom build system for your industry uh, with Palantir and customize it to your industry. Like this, this tool can be customized to so many different industries. It's it's a, it's a, it's great. I mean, it's really really great. Like every company can have its own operating software, and you can create it through through those data apps and through those apps. Um, and again, this company, since it deals with providing competitive advantage and providing strategy and best strategies for its customers it's tough to really know what they do but if you if you if you if you dig deeper on the, on the website and see some of the use cases i think you can get a pretty good picture as to what their customers do and their customers obviously don't want to advertise too much on that but for example so this, these are just very interesting facts that I've gleaned from their website. So Palantir Foundry fuels your data platforms that are warehouses, and data like their software defined data integration, and then extends them into analytics and operational applications. So the applications is key here. The, the, the data informs the software which runs the firm. That's, that's what this is. Okay, let me, let me move on with this one. Um, Okay, another example. 
So this is from an energy company who uses ontology, so their digital twin, to have the view of petroleum, uh, of everything going on with the wells and the petroleum uh, operations. And then the software, as the company shares input with, uh, with, with ontology, the software tells them short-term decision and what to do with the wealth management on short-term and long-term decisions, what to do for the assets investment strategy and what to do to maximize maximize the, the wealth extracted from that asset. So it's the software that tells you. It's the ontology, the digital twin informs you what to do for you to become a, most, a more performing company. So, so, you, so you can see the role of the manager is to improve the software and feed better data to the software. The role of the manager is not to make these decisions. Big data will give you these decisions. So that's why this company is very much groundbreaking. Um, and here's another one. So that's PG&E, right? We know we've had a lot of problems. Um, and they've uh, put a model uh, on, uh, on ontology uh, that includes equipment, health data, geospatial location, network topology. And with the model, they not only predict when the utility should conduct preventive maintenance, but also the model enables them to, to uh, protect parts of your business by switching parts of the electrical, electrical system on and off. So the software essentially is able to prevent them from having, having issues with, opera with their operations and then also um, protect and extend the life of their asset by switching on and off. So this is all informed by big data. And their website is filled with examples and there's a lot of, uh, of uh, good videos that explain it. And so I'll conclude with this. This is where the gold lies. This is where the industry is headed. Uh, and is Snowflake validating Palantir's opportunity? Uh, and I would argue that Snowflake is starting to do that because Snowflake, uh, some of the goals is to have companies upload all of their data on Snowflake, all of it in a, what they call the data cloud. And so... Um, if you have all of a company's data, uh, then you can easily envision applications built on that data, which is the same thing as what Palantir offers. And so you can build an application with, 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 with Snowflake on your data as well. And that's new. That's recently new, right? Palantir is pushing that now. But you can see they even have an ebook that they publish where they explain exactly what I just did in a, in a, in a better, better verbiage. And what do they say? With, Palant with Snowflake, what can you do? Data applications, they're customer or employee facing applications that process large volumes of complex and fast changing data, embedding analytics that allow users to harness their data directly within the application. So some of the companies that use all of this, for example, BlackRock or Capital One, so say you log in um, in, in your credit cards statement right? That's an application that allows you to see, I don't know, how much money you own, download your bill, etc. That is a customer-facing application. So there is no intervention from your employees there. The, the customer-facing application is running itself. So the, the business largely runs itself through this customer-facing app. Um, and when it's employee-facing, and this Palantir shows a lot. So, so not only can Palantir make a lot of decisions on its own, but sometimes for regulatory reasons and ethical reasons, you need to have the employee decide. But the software of Palantir tells the employee what to do. It tells you what needs to be done. Or it ranks option and says this to be done. And oftentimes an employee-facing application on the Palantir software is just approve, approve, approve what the software recommended so organizations are getting run by software and run that run by data and i think palantir has perhaps the most complete vision for this right now but snowflake is a better sales organization there's no denying i mean snowflake is is amazing at sales absolutely amazing at sales and so um yeah i think i think uh, i think i think i think palantir needs to um it's to ramp up its sales team and, and start selling the product and start explaining that vision more clearly. So anyways, thank you. No investment advice. This is just entertainment. Please like, please subscribe. Really appreciate it. Thanks for watching and see you in the next video.